I'm ready, but is the world ready for what's about to happen? Well, let's see. Welcome to The Fix. Sit down with copywriting experts Nick O'Connor and Glenn Fisher as they review, discuss and improve real world copy sent in by you. This is The Fix. We have long-standing rule at The Fix, which is we only really want to sell products we think are great. That's rule number one of being a good copywriter, right? Like sell good products. If something's crap, if something doesn't live up to its promises, if something is poor quality, low quality, whatever, we don't want to sell it. It's the simplest way of 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 solving, of making our life easier, making sure that we can work in a more authentic way. You know, there's lots and lots of benefits. But for one day only, we're going to put that rule aside today and look at two of the worst products that are out there in the marketplace. So anyone that's seen the pre-press for this episode will know we're going to look at the election campaigns for the Labour Party and the Conservative Party in the UK. Uh, Glenn, right, yes. I think just do a little disclaimer at the beginning. Uh, this is not an episode about politics. No, nope. I'm not going to be voting for either of these parties. I'm going to just na- nail my colours to the mast. I think if you are a politician, you are probably the worst people in the world. Leave everybody alone. Get your nose out of other people's business. Stop seeking power. There's loads of ways of making the world a better place. Loads of ways that don't involve you seeking power. So I'm just going to say that at the beginning. This is not a political episode because you said when I suggested we do this episode... <laughs> That gets us cancelled, knowing what I'm like, I think. I said said it would either be great um, or it would get us cancelled. Let's do both. Let's do both. That's what we're aiming for. Let's get cancelled in a great way. Yes. Yeah, so this is not about politics. We we, we don't discuss politics um, at the fix too much, uh, generally. Um, Although I will, at some point, rip off my jumper on the uh, video version of this and people will see the huge face of michael portillo tattooed to my chest um you know what? we haven't got that but yeah. just as an aside i did as a joke for my friend luke once email michael portillo saying hi it's my friend's birthday soon and he loves you um could i get a signed picture and michael portillo sent a signed picture of himself to me for my friend's birthday, which I just thought was incredible. Incredible. I, I, um, Maligned politician, uh, especially previous to uh, his uh, bold suits on the train programme. Well, I'm glad you mentioned his bold because I, I actually feel like you would be able to rock Michael Portillo's um, wardrobe. Not literally. I don't mean knock it over. I mean, still red trousers and tweed jackets. I've got nothing but admiration it. for Portillo's wardrobe. Um, yeah. His politics I might have differences with, but his wardrobe is excellent. And there is, if uh, we were better organised and researched, um, there's a great like meme thing somewhere on the internet of matching all of his uh, clothes to like the trains that he goes on or something. It's it's a brilliant it's a brilliant bit. If you if you've got some time to kill. Go and find that on the internet. But anyway. That's going to be a low moment. Right, let's look at... So I've got... I've actually got three pieces of copy. So I've got two from the Conservatives and one from Labour. So these are just things I've just pulled off the internet. They're not things that come through my door. Uh, The reason that I've got two pieces of copy for uh, the Conservatives will become obvious as we start to talk about this. So, Glenn, how do you want to do this? Do you want to... Do you want me to read both aloud and we'll look at and then we'll talk about both? Or do you want to do one and then the other? Exactly. Let's do one and then the other. I think that'll probably be easier and get people's mind. I'd, I'd just say as well, I mean, it goes without saying, obviously, but the, the reason we're doing this, people, people often think with um, politics, with charity, I often get this um, with charity copy. Um, it's like, oh, yeah, but no, we're not selling we're not selling so it's it, the, the rules of copywriting don't apply to that and and that's it's just such a nonsense you are persuading people to take action that's what copywriting is yeah. um the, the the salesmanship in print kind of thing that's where it kind of falls down a little bit because it kind of leans so much to 
selling as in a business transaction, a bit literal. But it's it's persuasion. You're persuading people to take action. That's what copy kind of does. So we can learn a lot from from something where we are persuading people not to put their hands in their pockets, although political stuff does that, um, but it's to go out and take action to vote and to, to act, be active. And that's what we are interested in as copyright. Yeah, I mean, it's a nonsense to say otherwise. I mean, copyright is just another form of communication. Yeah. Uh, persuasive and memorable communication at like the end point. I'm going to file that when people say the rules of copyright and don't apply. I'm going to file that in the sort of wall of shame alongside people who say, well, the product isn't really that unique anyway. And you go, hmm, because you haven't done your job properly. <laughs> so do you know what I mean? It's just part yeah. of that. Let's do Labour first, because, um, I mean, let's face it, we don't know anything about British politics. They're probably going to win. Um, they are. If based on the fact that the Conservatives have been... So I'm just going to set some of the context, because I think this is important. Yeah. Um, so if you're English, obviously you already know this, or British. But Conservatives have been in uh, power since 2010, 14 years. So Labour have not managed to oust them uh, in the previous three um, elections. So there is in the country a feeling that probably the Conservatives have been in power for long enough now. I mean, probably could have said that before. They they won a landslide, effectively, in the last election. But that's the context. So Labour are the... Uh, they're not the incumbents, they're the insurgents. And so there's going to be an element of that in their marketing. Similarly, we're going to see a little bit of that with the Conservatives. Anyway, enough about politics. I will read you the leaflet I have. Uh, how have I lost it already? I haven't lost it. Here we go. Right. This is from the Labour Party, Keir Starmer. So we have a lovely picture of Keir Starmer. Uh, I think he's smiling, but I wouldn't. I couldn't be 100% sure. It could be a wince. It's, it's, it's very wince based. It's, like, it's um, wince. There's teeth on show. Anyway, sort of lovely and forgettable man that he is. So... The, the banner across the stop says, breaking news, general election called, time for change, breaking news, general election called, and it looks a little bit like breaking news on the TV. And then the copy simply reads, oh, the, the main headline on one side of the leaflet says, time for change. And then the blurb on the other side says, after 14 years of the Conservatives, nothing works like it's supposed to. Hard work isn't rewarded and you have less money in your pocket each month. It shouldn't be this way. That's why why I fought to change my party, to put Labour back in the service of working people. Country first, always. This election is your chance to give Britain its future back. A future where ambition is backed. Oh, that's a weird repetition of the word back there. Sorry, whoever wrote this, <laughs> whatever. Um, uh, sorry, a future where ambition is backed. Our economy works for you. And our public services are there when you need them. Vote Labour and let's rebuild Britain's future together. A future where ambition is backed. What a, I mean... Okay, if I had to be cruel, I would say that suggests you don't really understand what ambition is. <laughs> <laughs> Which I would argue is probably a political point, so we won't get into that. Um, yeah, um, your ambition will be backed. Who oh, will be backed? my unbacked ambitions are, are my... Of my trill ones that are failing. Yeah. Spineless ambition. You're <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's not okay. That I'm gonna say for the second time in a week, that is bad writing, but we'll forgive them. You know, I don't know who wrote this. They're probably you know, work for a political party, they're probably not gonna be a writer. Um, well, I, I disagree actually. I think it will probably be an agency that has produced this stuff. Um Right. Say, well, it's true then, Glenn, because the proof is in the words in front of us. Right. Anyway, what do we think about the idea? Let's not nitpick too much um, about whether ambition can be backed or have a spine or however, however you want to put it. By the way, I'm loving the way you've brought this up on the screen. If you're listening to the, um, the show on Spotify, you won't be able to see this, but if you're on YouTube, you will. It's a lovely, lovely bit of production value there, Glenn. I know. I thought I, 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 thought I would in case people want to see it, but we will read yeah. it out if, if people are listening to this while they're jogging. Yeah. Keep going. You can well, make that next K. But anyway. Well, um, yeah, you've got ambition. It's backed. We back your ambition to do that 5K. Uh, after 14 years of the Conservatives. So so what are we looking at? The idea generally. Yeah. Um, so, so I actually had some comments on this, which was, I think, okay, it is going to be hard to not cross over into 
politics slightly or just your feeling about politics but it's a fairly safe piece of copy mm -hmm. um i think it probably could have run five years ago and i think that's probably what i would like to see different if i was writing this piece of copy i'd say you're saying the things there is a sense with labor that they need to say the stuff that means they don't get pulled off they don't go they don't take too many risks they don't throw it away because they're a long way ahead in the polls and they just want to run a safe campaign. And while I get that, I don't think that's a great communication strategy. I get it might be a good political strategy, but in terms of the copy and the communication strategy, it is better, I think, to take a few more risks and focus more on one thing. Yeah. Whereas here, it's maybe a little bit of a, you know, a, a bit of a... It's, like, it's a bit of a... I it's a bit of a box ticking exercise yes. um and what i'm reminded of i say this a lot and i don't know if it's ever helpful um but i all you know i kind of look for clues in copy of like the mindset of the writer and it that kind of and it reveals the research they've done their awareness of what they're trying to say and i think here this reminds me this whole thing it feels like when you write a piece of sales copy um, that you're trying to convince yourself because yes. you haven't convinced yourself of the actual thing and you don't know quite what you're selling. And the the, the clue for me is that it shouldn't be this. That, that's why I fought to change my party to put Labour. Now, obviously, the box ticking exercise, there was the, all the problems with Labour with uh, anti-Semitism and all that kind of stuff and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's that's why it's there. There's, there's reasons for each of the little, like, touchstones. You're saying the 14 years, blah, blah, blah change the party we're doing this country first always which sounds kind of weird but um but it it feels like it's the it's the writers and i'd say the the whole team not the actual just the writer but yeah, the lead on this get the committee yes. is telling itself oh no this is what we're doing isn't it this is what we're doing we're, do we're doing this these things rather than absorbing the information absorbing the research as i recommend people do taking it all and go right okay what does this actually mean for the reader and it and then turning and writing the actual piece of copy it feels like it's at that moment and we see that a lot in copy i think i've got two ways i think they could have done it better but before i do i just want to point something out that country first always you know when you can you can see the edit i think as a mm. writing that was obviously written as Britain first, always. But of course, as soon as you say that, that's very similar to Donald Trump, right? America. And I would imagine somebody said, we can't say Britain first. Let's change it to country first, because nobody has ever said, oh, country first. No, you say family first, or you say Britain first. There's ways of saying these things, so you can see the committee in there. I actually think there's two really powerful things that um, Labour can do. And both would be more emotional and more personal. The first one would be um, the this is your moment thing. So if you're speaking to the people who genuinely, you know, obviously politics is about appealing to different constituencies. And it's like, are you trying to appeal to your base or to the people in the middle? Obviously, the, you need to get the base out. But the people that actually decide elections are the people in the middle. So how you um, you're actually talking to two different audiences, right? But. You can fire up people by saying, how long have you waited for this chance? How many things have you seen go wrong? How many times have you seen the NHS in trouble, armed services in trouble, scandal? How many times have you seen it and shaken your head and been ashamed of our country? This is your chance to change it. He's given you the chance. Get rid of him. Like Now, again, I'm not political, but that would appeal to me because... That it's hard. Almost nobody hasn't had that feeling. There's been a pandemic. All these things that have happened, where most people are thinking, "God, this has gone on a bit long now." As near all this this madness that's been going on, all the terrible decisions or whatever it might be, or just incompetence. Um, I I'd say that's a that's an emotion people would have, and so we're really ratcheting up the emotional uh, pitch. So I think this is it. This is your moment. Are you now the time to be like to stand with me and just make it all about the reader and not like you probably don't need to say nothing works like it's supposed to. Hard work isn't rewarded. 
you have less money in your pocket. Each one. But those things aren't true. Like they, they're not palpably true. What's true is the feeling people have, which is it's gone on long enough. Something's got to change. And this is our chance to get rid of them. So I'd go either with that or mm -hmm. there's another pervasive feeling, which is the conservatives are finished. You know it. I know it. They know it. I'm actually going to come to this when we look at the conservatives. You could actually lean into that and say, everyone knows it. Everyone's saying the same thing. Uh, the conservatives are, are over, they're tired, and now it's time for a new party to step in. So to just mirror people's feelings back at them a little bit more would be where I would go. So I'd make it punchier and more about how I feel or how my prospect feels, you, 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 all the way through. And I'd, yeah, I'd try and make it a bit less box ticky. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, there really is. It's the more I just look into it on a kind of line by line basis. I, I agree wholeheartedly with your your point of um, sentiment. It's about the, sentiment. Then, yeah, the feet. But I also think it they, they're one of the same thing, really, in the sense that the copy on the page is kind of crap because it's been written by committee, and you can see that all the way through it, and it's like it's it's uh, it's chewy. It's you can't really get through it. It looks like proper copy looks like advertising copy it's it's written in that kind of faux advertising copy way um so i can see the kind of working out of it it's covering up all the things but really the 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 state of the thing is is when i look at that am i going to read that do i want to read that and i'm not talking about the design so much as the there's just nothing grabs me whatsoever and makes me feel in an emotional way. It's just a blurb written in a kind of like gassy way. It's like which which is really I'm not going to get too political, but the problem with Keir Starmer, I would say, one of the challenges, and I think this is generally accepted, yeah. um, is that he's boring. He's like he's a bit plain. And he's not very good communicator and being emotional. The literature is your opportunity to kind of tweak that up a bit and actually get the hit. So it's like, okay, he might not be great on stage or I might not be quite get, getting their thing, but we want to grab that. But actually, they, they seem to have almost like written it in a way he would just read it off in a very like yes. silly way on the thing. I, think I don't think they've done that. He... It's oh. by mistake. They've not gone, oh, let's try and mirror Keir Starmer's voice because it's nothing to do with that. No human speaks like those sentences. It, that That is copy uh, that's been produced there rather than a, a, a person speaking. And I feel like that's a massive mistake um, that they've made in the stylistic choice of the copy they're using there. It's taglines. It's Britain's future together, country first always, your future's backed back. It's just piffle it's like it's not it's not actual sentiment it's not actual thoughts um and it's just a, it's a, it's this you can't change who Keir Starmer is that's just that's one of his weaknesses his strengths correspondingly are he's organized he's he's thoughtful he'll, he'll cross the t's and dot the highs or whatever the thing is. um that's good we accept that, but in the literature, you can. That's where you can go. All right, okay. Well, we know he's weak communicator. Let's make our communications much punchier, much stronger. He's Let's trying go. to. I mean, I would, I would argue. <clears throat> I think it's very difficult actually to be the insurgent because I, I bet we could look back at previous campaigns that the the tendency to reach for a cliche time for change. That's what all in, insurgent parties say. Mm. Mm -hmm. They probably said that at the last one. They probably said that at the previous one. The Conservatives probably said that in 2010. Sometimes it works because the other party falls over. And so Starmer, I mean, he's already sort of, I'd argue he's like already the next John Major. Mm. Like he's a sort of grey man in a grey suit. Like he's, you're right, he's boring and uninspiring. But he knows that weirdly, that's actually enough to win this one because the other lot are you know, some of the worst people that have ever been in charge. You mm -hmm. know, the Mr. can't even find trousers that fit him. I mean, it's that that level. He can't find a pair of trousers that don't show his socks. That's how incompetent he is. So 
I mean, God bless him. He walks around in those trousers and no, I, I, I can't, sorry, I can't get it out of my head. But like, so he knows that being bland is to this, to a certain extent, a, a part of his appeal because he doesn't want to throw it away. But if, I think if that's the case, you need to reflect the well of feeling in your prospect. So it's like we always talk about you've got product or prospect, right? You can go to the product and go to the prospect. If the product doesn't give you a lot to work with, and he, and he doesn't, he's the product here, then talk to the prospect. There's plenty of feeling mm. out there in the world. So I'd make it more about that. And I do think I would, I think it's on, it's on the writers and the communicators behind him to not reach for those cliches, mm. those rebuild Britain's future together, time for change. I mean, country first, always go down a pub. And I mean, I, I know Nigel Farage has just come back into the race. He is a brilliant communicator because he speaks like normal people speak. I mean, he's a, or whatever it was that happened to him yesterday with the milkshake. When he coming out of a pub, he talks like a bloke down the pub. And that, this is about communication strategy, not politics. People respond to that because they see something of themselves in it. So I think a lot of things could have been done different. They'll probably still win the election and they know it. But I think if I was on that team, I'd think, guys, shall we just go back in the room and just try a bit harder? <laughs> shall we just yeah, try? There's, there's, some, there's some weird. I, 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 it's fascinating, and, and obviously we don't have all the things. But I'm looking at that, and I I feel that I think he's got like that black shirt and bomber jacket on, right? God bless him. And he's and that that uh, flag, and I feel like the the way Labour will win is by getting the people who were undecided to come over and they, they want to like appeal to the right more because they've got to get people on the right to vote for them, to, to win an election. That's how it works. Well, at least people in the centre. Yeah. yeah. That, that well, that, I'd say from, but I feel like that's going for that kind of working classy, slightly like slightly uh, I, I, I want to the best, I don't know the oh, best. Yeah. Nobody that. wants to see you have, you're having a liberal meltdown. Like, yeah. just sends a reading, reader of the Guardian. He doesn't like flags. You're talking, they want to talk to people. No, no, no. My, my point being, my point yeah. that I'm making is I think that's what they're going for. They're trying to appeal to that kind of yeah. more working class, yeah. that right leaning voter who would wear a bomber jacket and respect the flag and all that kind of stuff. But then, no person like that would read that piece of copy and be moved in the slightest way. Like, so what my point being, <laughs> apart from having meant a break down the middle of it, is that I don't believe the strategy around this is justified in any way because I think it's a met. I don't think it works, and I think it comes back to another big thing we always say about a copy. No, they're not committing to the idea. If you're applying to that part of the audience. You need to go everything on that part of the audience and that prospect and go, right, well, I'm going to talk like then. I'm going to, what are their fears? What are their things? And it just doesn't do that. And what it what it therefore creates is a piece that will come through my door and go immediately in the bin. And that will happen around the country. Well, you'd actually ask, I mean, I, I think if this came through your door, you'd you'd obviously say, Ruth, what is this this picture? And she'd say, that's the, that's the flag. That's the flag of the United Kingdom. I'd, by the way, I'd take off my Guardian suit. <laughs> I'm going to um, talk about flags while you get the next piece of copy up. The yeah. only thing I, I agree with you, although I would say I don't think it's right leaning necessarily for somebody. I think most people are proud of the country or they're proud to be British and seeing the flag isn't necessarily a right leaning thing. That's probably, uh, it's just something a very small. No, yeah, I, I just, I think it's, but this, that's my point again, is that in the same way you can tell they're convincing themselves in the copy, they're speaking to this idea of what like they're speaking to strange biases that the media have created yes instead of actually analyzing the facts and going right well this is where we are it it just feels very kind it's of affected. it's getting in its own way yes yeah. i mean and nothing gets in the way of your communications like being conflicted not quite knowing where you what you stand and trying to Whereas actually, I think I think both of the ideas or the suggestions, the ways forward, I suggest that that's probably how people do feel and just talk to them about it. That's the, the, the prevailing emotion. Right. Let's talk about the Conservatives. So I'll read it aloud and then I've got some comments on this too. Um, so um, these are 
a direct analog because I think the other one was a, a male, uh, a, a, an A5 male drop, whereas this one's an A4, so there's some slight differences. But this one's designed, if you can't see, it's much more like a newspaper, okay? And it's also branded with Labour's colours, which I'm going to come back to. Um, it's red, not blue. Uh, the headline reads, Your Future, Special Edition, The Choice for You and Your Family. And then the main headline says, Clear Plan and Bold Action, or Back to Square One. And then there's some other sort of stuff around. The, I'm going to read the body copy, but there is stuff around this. This is a good one to watch on YouTube for sure, I would say, uh, if you want to see the design and things like that. But I'll read the copy. It's actually got Return to Sender scrawled over, but that's just the image I could find. This was Elvis's copy. Yeah, <laughs> we, we managed to get... The world is great. <laughs> Sorry, talk about giveaways. Talk about, just talk about revealing lines of copy that tell you that the writer's mental state. How's this for one? Line one, the world is growing more uncertain by the day. <laughs> We're still living with the after effects of the global pandemic. The world is in the midst of two wars, and uh, one in Ukraine and one in the Middle East. We've been hit uh, with attacks from uh, foreign actors. In uncertain times, you and your family need to know the government has a plan for a secure future in every sense. A future where your family is protected and your country is defended. A future where you work hard, uh, where if you work hard, you'll have financial security. A future where the government is on your side. And then I can't read what's under there uh, because it's got research to send the scrolled over it. Only two parties can form the next government, Labour or Conservatives. The uh, election is set to be a, uh, closer than many people expect, so your vote will be decisive. Rishi Sunak and the Conservatives, uh, oh, sorry, if you're, if you're not in the UK, and I saw this on the telly the other day, most people don't know who Rishi Sunak uh, is. He's uh, the, the chap whose trousers don't fit him. He's in charge. Um, Rishi Sunak and the Conservatives have been working to, uh, to a clear plan. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Rishi Sonak and the Conservatives have been working to a clear plan and are willing to take the bold action we need to deliver a secure future. Meanwhile, Labour don't have a plan at all. It's an unproven claim, I think. Um, in this general election special, we take a look at what the parties are offering and who's best for your families and country's security. So if you want to make an informed decision, take a look. Okay. So, again, not a political show. We're going to... We're gonna, pile in on both parties um there's some awful writing in that my god my god um to think people are paid to write these things it is dreadful isn't it like you know one of the things this is just a general communication thing not a politics thing when people talk to us about trying to find more clients and worried about being able to find work and stuff the thing i always say to them is just look at what's out there in the world 90 percent of which is absolute dog shit <laughs> like nothing makes you feel good about yourself like seeing something that's been bought and paid for out there in the world anyway ah <sighs> sorry just taking a deep breath after that because it's winding me up it feels like an election should be in a in a in a sound society it should be you know the very best talent should be on show and yet, yeah yeah for me, it's, it's the the thing that frustrates me is the noise. It's just noise stuff. It's when you just when it's just noise, like you're not creating anything of what. It's just noise. This all of all of this stuff is just noise, rather than trying to um, create something interesting. And 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 that that's that, that's the the biggest that's the biggest sin of copy. Like when it's just it's just noise. Even like. It, it, without being too meta, we launched a course uh, today, and we we obviously wrote a piece of copy to sell that uh, course. And one of the feedbacks, apart from people joining the course, was going, "Oh, this copy is great!" And we, we'll like we're going to go talk through the copy, explain how we did and what we did. But I actually always think in those terms is like, even I'm writing this copy, is this useful? Can you learn from it? Is it a good thing to have anyway i think it was you nick who once said um wisely like i only i want to publish ideas that even if it doesn't work it's still a good yeah. idea to have done yeah. and I, I think that's it's like this piece of copy this piece of the, it's just it's just collateral it's it's nothing it's it's not doing anything it is obviously is and we'll get to that in a minute but it's just that when you if you're in a world where that's the kind of copy 
that you've been asked to do, you really need to be careful. I don't know. Not that you so, just can't maybe you just need to pay your own bills. But anyway. So here are some things that change. One one point I'd say is quite strong. I quite like the way it apes a newspaper, by the way. I actually thought yeah. that was quite a nice little format twist. And a headline that reads your future, the choice for you and your family, it does tick some of the boxes. Yeah. So maybe I wouldn't change that. The main headline, clear plan and bold action or back to square one. I mean, that shows you the conflict in the in the party's mind or in the writer's mind. They don't quite know. They're asking you a question. They're asking you lots of questions. And then I would say the lead, the body copy is, you know, that needed to go in the bin. That needed to go straight in the bin. That's what you would call <clears throat> clearing your throat copy. <clears> throat> Let's just talk about the world and Ukraine and uh, Israel. And... <clears throat> well, it's, it's, it's there, it's there yeah. to, to put the fear in people. This is the, the project it theory. It that very well. It it, no, I'm saying it doesn't, but that's why it's there. You can see that thing, but it's not really speaking to it. Just go back quickly, Nick, um, and I think this speaks to the whole piece. I think it is an effect, a more effective um, design choice However, and you, I know you're going to make a point about the red masthead, um, yeah. which is Labour's colours, which is interesting. But it says Conservatives at the top there. And I actually think this, the, what they're loosely going for, again, whether they mean to do this on purpose or not, is to stand aside from politics. And they're going to say, look, the world's screwed. Like, we need a plan, like, because we're fearful, so we need to have a plan in place. And do you know who's got a plan? Guess what? Open page one. It's the Tories. We've got the plan. plan. Not, sorry, Glenn. I know you're going to say you shouldn't have... Conser- they, they have to have that on. You have to say it's communication from the Conservatives. Well, can't you... You could hide that to the bottom. Maybe. I'm not sure you're allowed to. I'm not, you're not, I, know, I know what you're getting at. That, you're that's what I, I just feel like there's probably a better way of doing that. I there's, don't a bigger, there's a bigger issue, I would say, Glenn, which is... I mean, one, the the, the, the the fact that the copy is very diffuse. But two, if you are the incumbent party and you've been in power for 14 years, talking about how messed up the world is, is not an effective strategy in any way. No. It doesn't work. You're not thinking about who you're writing to because almost everything you look at and say, yeah, you did that. Aren't you a part of that? Didn't you like what you have to? So if you're going to talk about the problems, you have to own up to your part in them. But you'll never be blame free. Yeah, um, I th- this is a this is a tough. One. I was thinking about this, and this we might veer to politics, and let's not. But I thought about this because I was listening to the rest of politics the other day, and um, obviously they're analysing it and what have you. And this idea, I think it was Rory Stewart who raised he. He, he sees the world in a very literal way and he just can't imagine people not seeing it in his way kind of thing. And he's like, but don't people realise that um, the Tories are responsible for all of this kind of stuff, the point you're, you're making, you, you're, you're incumbent, and therefore if you're saying things are bad, that's because of you. But And I thought about that and I thought, yeah, that's obviously true, but I actually think what there's, what you're going for here and this is why we can't kind of avoid the political angle of this, is I actually think what my guess would be that the strategists and the dominant comings of this world almost say, would say in the room, right, we're just going to, we're going to speak to people's suspension, we're going to assume people will suspend their disbelief and people who want to hate labour and people want to hate that kind of stuff We'll just we'll just overlook that fact if we give them a reason to. So if we, all of this copy for me is actually trying to speak to that that bold plan, all that it's it's speaking to, you know, when I say at the end of a like on a long copy sales letter, the rest once you've made that emotional connection, the rest of the copy is rational and it's for the the buyer to explain it to other people. I feel like a lot of this material, and that maybe that's what this is trying to be, is giving the voter who's going to vote Tory anyway, and I'll come back to the effectiveness of this, and I don't think it's fair, going to vote uh, Tory anyway, giving them reasons to say this is why. It's because we've, they've got a plan. They've got a plan because it, it's thing. It's giving them that, it's that rational stuff. 
which again comes back to the why would you do that if they're already voting voting conservatives you don't need that person like or or do you it may be the strategy is this is to get those make sure we get those like hard the the core support voting kind of thing but i think that's what's going on with that whole speak to the plan i don't and i'm bringing it back to copy in the sense that because that is kind of valuable at some stage you're giving copy often gives the reader the explanations they need to make their their point to other people if that makes sense it, to, ju to justify it yeah, the yeah. Well, i think that's the only reason i could think this exists because otherwise it's crap but. i mean so one sort of meta point i wanted to make we're not going to look at the other piece of copy i found um but i found more than one conservative thing and they all lots of them have the same headline but they all look very different and apparently this is strategic that they've kind of devolved it down to the constituent level so you, you do your own campaigning which is a classic violation of the rule of what if you just look at that in marketing terms it's like tell you what let's just try loads of different ideas because we actually don't have one ourselves and so we've talked a lot about select and amplify you know select isolate mm -hmm. amplify. that's how you communicate effectively um and the conservatives clearly haven't done that they haven't decided it's this we're going to make it about this they've said no you guys decide it can all look different or, or whatever so they you, you know, the role of one is actually most uh, is best described in um, in Made to Stick, um, where but and so that's the Chip and Dan Heath book, and they talk about uh, it's the economy, stupid. You know, it's the economy, stupid. Just come back to that. Come hmm. back. To that. Tony Blair was the same thing in ninety seven. Education, education, education. It was the rule of three wrapped up. Oh, sorry, it was the rule of one wrapped up in the rule of three make it about one thing and live and die on that. Because at least then if you don't win, and let's face it, you probably won't win based on the, the, the current. Policy. Well, uh, at the end of the day, in that sense, the, the power of one that the Conservatives seem to be going with, as far as I can see, is that they've got a plan. So now, if that's your rule of one idea, like, now you just put that into the, the meeting, go, right, here's, I'm going to pitch my uh, idea for the headline. We've got a plan. And you'd get left out the room because it'd be like, well, that's that's a crap idea. Like everyone's got a plan. Like even if you haven't got a plan, you've got a plan not to follow a plan. It's just it's just stupid. It's it's banal. It's I feel like the the rooms these people move in, they probably wouldn't have been left out of the room. You know, and in, in any sense, it clearly wasn't. So it. How how might let's try let's just try and workshop it. How might you make it more useful? Well, I don't think it works to talk about the uncertainty of the world, especially, and I also don't think it, it works to talk so broadly about geopolitical issues because those things don't tend to motivate people anyway. Ukraine, Middle East, they're probably not going to be election issues. So you have to you have to either either really go heavy on that or completely row back on it. I'll row back on it probably. What might you do? Okay. You need to address the fact that there's a past here, that we have a history. We've been in charge and things aren't great. They're not perfect. You can argue the extent to which they're culpable for, you know, they can't be culpable for all of the world's problems, but they're definitely in charge and they've been in charge for a long time. So if, they're, if they are picking up on a sense that people are unhappy, that's an objection that has to be ad addressed. Mm -hmm. Or you could skirt it by trying to reset the clock. So it's interesting that the headline says, or oh, back to square one, as in we've got a plan or we can go back to square one. I'd argue for the conservatives to have an effective strategy, they are the ones that need to say, right, it's year zero, let's reset everything. Forget everything that's gone past. We are a country that looks to the future and doesn't uh, dwell on the past. And if it's year zero and we're starting from scratch, who do you want to be in charge? That guy or this guy? And then draw them as two different things. That's your real choice. You can't vote on the past. You can't change what's happened in the past. We can't change that there was a pandemic. We can't change that um, Russia invaded Ukraine. We can't change that, you know, we can't change any of it. I mean, that's a slight political sl sleight of hand, but you can't go back and change it. All we can do is look at here and now. So you could address it by resetting and make it about the future. And then you might have a chance of making it something a bit more unusual and a bit different. But if you kind of dwell on the past, but don't acknowledge your place in it, 
and then say, but don't worry, we've, we didn't have a plan the last 14 years, but we've got a plan now, but we're not going to tell it yet, but it's very bold. <laughs> like you've got to choose the other option. You, yeah. The choice of these extras are wrong. Yeah. I, I, it's, I guess it's, it goes back to the old argument of just being honest and authentic um, in politics. Generally, if that gets you, you could, if you do that, if you just say, look, mistakes, mistakes were made. Like, yeah, we, we do it. We see, you see it in the copy all the time. Perfect. If if we if anybody who guarantees you this is lying to you, kind of thing, yeah. you can say mistakes were made, and we we all do it. We've done it. Labour did it. Blah blah blah. Thing. And and that just gets rid of that objection. Yeah, I, I saw um, Farage yesterday, and and the reason he, he plays such an interesting role, as you say, he's a good communicator. For, for, forget whatever else um, about the politics. But I saw an interview where I think it was the, the journalist was asking him, the, pointing out the fact that he'd not won or whatever. And, it, and Farage did the thing where he said, have you run? Have you run for office, like, to the BBC presenter? And the guy, the guy like laughs, going, no, that's not the point. And he goes, well, what do you know then? Like, blah, blah, blah. Now, I watched that, and I know, and I saw people obviously in my world in my circles of social media it's mostly left-wing stuff and people going i oh, such a dickhead is all this kind of stuff and i thought yes yes he is that's not a very good way of doing that but what i also thought i thought what he's done there is done the classic turn it back and people i know people who will go well yeah what has that guy he's not doing it so think and he's just been honest in inverted commas and gone well you're not doing it it's reduced it to the bottom kind of argument where it's like well you did it and it but really if the presenter was asking more harder questions about policy and all that kind of stuff then Farage wouldn't have had the opportunity to do that but what also another thing Glenn which is I'd actually read that whole situation differently well, let, me, let me just make, finish the point, though. On the basis that he, the reason that was interesting to me is that because what Farage is doing effectively is, is whether you like it or not, he's being or he's presenting a, a character that is being authentic and yeah. warts and all kind of thing. There's nothing authentic in the copy here. It's just copy again. It's just the party line. It's not saying, look, mistakes were made. We've, we've screwed up here. So that that's the the bit where I, I think it's time for authenticity, like in in everything, but certainly in politics. If I was in that strategy meeting, I'd, I'd be really pushing, like, come on, we need to like our our keyword is how do we be authentic about this and say, yeah, look, my predecessors screwed up, but I'm here trying to do this thing. Do you know what I mean? That's that's where I'd be pushing the boat. They, they could actually, I, I would imagine, politically speaking, that's a risk, but. Given the position they're in, they probably have to take some risk. So exactly. it's one exactly. party should be taking risk. Just on the Farage thing, that I think is interesting. What well, he has a good, I would say that that's I kind of okay. So I know Nigel more than you. Um, that probably is what he's like. I don't think I think he probably is being authentically himself based on the interactions I've had with him. Whether you like that or not is your own. Um, that's that's your own uh, decision. What he's good at there, what I would say is actually going on in that thing is this is another copy idea it's the concept of the shared enemy so what he's really saying his messaging there is lots of people massively now distrust both the political establishment and the media they get the sense that all of these people look down on them and despise them it's like after brexit when the guardian sent someone up north to eat a sausage roll and work out why they'd voted the, the way they weren't supposed to that we because you because you don't represent those people so you don't really understand them you're you know part of the you know whatever whatever sphere of bullshit those people like existed so by attacking a politician not only do you do what you do you sort of do this sort of conversational jujitsu and spin it on them you sort of say i'm prepared to i'm prepared to say i'm, I'm prepared to make this about you and say this is I, i'm prepared to sort of put myself on the side of the of my um, potential audience say, look, I don't like them either. They're smug, aren't they? They're up themselves. They think they can take pot shots at us. And you know what? Most politicians just play the game with them, whereas I'm not mm. going to. I'm, I'm 
I'm not going to, I'm going to break the rules. So I think there's a shared enemy thing that anyway, we're probably getting out into the realms of also talking about inter individual interactions. He also got a milkshake throw, throw, uh, thrown over, which I thought was funny. Um, True. Although, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, but interesting that he will play such a big role in the media. Yeah. And this comes back to copywriting and the, the, the reason he will is because the two other candidates, the main candidates, are so dry and yeah. and dull. And and when we talk about going for a 10 and hitting a zero, Farage will go for the 10 and, and probably hit the zero at the end kind of thing. But the others are just petering along and that will that will just maintain the status quo. When you're trying to get people to take action which is what we started this whole thing and what all, all of these messages are about. They're trying to get people to take action. You get people to take action not by being dull and boring them into um, no. taking action. You excite them and make them emotionally engaged. And that is that is why Farage comes up as a character because it, it, on a, a very basis, basic level, that's what he does. That's where his marketing is. The Tories, the Tories, the Tories, and the Labour are, are not doing that. That no. it's both are doing a marketing to themselves. I think that's the biggest takeaway for me from actually looking at this stuff. I think they're all trying to convince themselves and yes, it's become true. a kind of echo chamber within each party. Um, and that's well, we'll see what happens. Uh, well, at it through. You know, copywriting is communication and politics is all about communication. And there's no, there is no, you cannot argue with the fact that Nigel Farage is a much better communicator than, than almost anyone else in the, in the political world. I mean, by definition, he has to be, he look at the outsized role he plays within the sort of yeah. political system, considering he's never won a, uh, a seat in parliament and he doesn't run a big party. He is able to dominate the conversation and there are things that it's worth learning about. Now, if it put if that puts you off, then I think you're slightly missing the point, which is it's about style of communication, authenticity, knowing your audience, knowing how to talk to people in a way that they'll listen to. And I'd say if I was encapsulating both of the the pieces of copy we looked at from both political parties, you know, I would end the episode by saying we are available to write copy for anyone. You know, we're we're mercenaries. We'll happily we'll A B test it. Then we'll write one headline for one party. I'll write one for the other. And we'll see who wins. We'll have a fair old scrap. But get rid of this shit. Because this mm. is dreadful. If this is the standard of communication that's going out there into the, the marketplace of ideas, the political marketplace, then my God, there's a space for more well, no, Yeah, but also the proof the proof is in the uh, the voting turnout, isn't it? Like We have the yeah. worst voting turnout like percentages. Why? Because of this junk. Like, it's... Anyway. Glenn, do you know what we've done? We've now just spent an hour coating off one of the next prime minister. Like one of these guys would be the next prime minister, and we we've, we've just stuck the boot in on both of them. Never mind. Yeah. We're not, and also the, the agency that will then get all of the copywriting gigs for that prime minister when they're being some poor copyright. I apologise to the uh, copywriter who, if there is a specific copywriter who worked on this. But at the same time, I don't. I don't. You should have done a better job. It's bad copy. Yeah, I, don't well, I would say I would say the business above the copywriter. That's so, probably led to a lot of this. Not having it. I'm retracting that apology. I feel mm. like I can empathise with you, but I'm not apologising. Anyway, the day before the election, the 3rd of July, is the real significant event of the summer, of course, Fix yeah. Fest. So if you want to come along and have a few beers with us the day before the election, talk about copy, AI, maybe we'll even talk about politics. God, what a nightmare that would be. Uh, come along. It's in uh, central London on the 3rd of July. Aside from that, I really enjoyed this. It's got me really fired up. I love looking at copy where it's somebody I don't know has written it. So I should just <laughs> say what I want. Um, let's wrap this up, Glenn. We'll be back next week with another episode of The Fix. Just, just one more thing. I've, just, I've still got that thing. It's still on my screen. It says inside, um, like the Magalog style. It's just inside and then bullet points, news about your tax cut, who's security figure. But then it's got 20,000 extra cops. And I always remember someone saying to me, like, remember, inside colon, you have to make sure that each bullet follows the word at the top. 
So essentially, it should could say inside 20,000 extra <laughs> cops. You just open the pages and just the police, the Metropolitan Police rush out at you like, geez, what's going on? Anyway, <laughs> on that one, Michelle, on that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will see you again next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. If you enjoy The Fix and want to get access to even more good stuff, Join the Fix Accelerator today. Get access to special masterclasses from Nick and me. Watch expert interviews with industry legends. Join live copy feedback sessions every week and get connected to our very own private copy network. Visit thefixaccelerator.com for more information.